wanted to interject. If you have not already seen this episode, please, you might want to consider skipping my recap uh, if you're interested in going to the grade. Uh, but for gosh sakes, go watch it first, please. Hello, everyone. Aimer back with another Mission Impossible review. I'm very, very, very pleased to say that we're starting with Season 3, which I don't think there's going to be much argument that this is the finest season of the show that was ever produced. If my voice sounds a little bit emotional, it is, because I just finished watching Season 3, Episode 1, The Heir Apparent. Um, I'll discuss it more when we get to the grading and discussion section. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 wow. Anyway, recap of the episode. Today's instructions are from a payphone. The mission. The king of the country of Povia has just died. And a general Kayset is trying to take power in the country by being named regent. The IMF must stop him. We'll have the regular team. There's no more dossier scene. As a matter of fact, with the last episode of last season, Recovery, there was no dossier scene in that either. So we've kind of done away with that at this point. The gist of this episode is that Cinnamon will become Selene, the long-lost princess who was rumored to have died during the previous revolution. I made myself a note to not call her Anastasia to kind of be funny. Forget that. Let's be serious. General Kayset talks with his man Zageb about preparing for their planned coup uh, and how the archbishop who gets to choose and anoint the regent, basically, is stymieing their plans for power. He confronts the archbishop soon after, saying that he won't be stopped and the rumors about Selene still being alive are not going to help. In the Povian Cathedral, we see that Jim has gone in as a tourist, Cinnamon as a nun, Willie as a cleaner, and Barney as a monk. Willie swipes a locket from a display, and Cinnamon attaches something to a shelf in the confessional. Willie and Barney make a mold of a locket, and then Willie drops it, attacks, attracting the guard's attention. The would-be thieves are taken to Zageb, saying that they were paid to get a wax impression by someone who an old blind woman kept referring to as the professor, and tells Zageb where they can be found. They start a fight with the guards, and they end up in a prison cell. Zageb heads, heads to their hotel room and finds no one there. He consults with Kayset, who tells us that the locket belonged to Selene, and Zageb found information about Jim and an x-ray, an old x-ray, of a girl's broken arm. In the cell, Willie and Barney use Willie's glasses, which have special grinders on the lenses, to remove some bricks. They find the doctor who took that x-ray, Rollin, of course, who says that the x-ray was stolen from his files many years ago. Rollin recalls the girl was thin and blind, and under pressure confirms that, yes, it was indeed Princess Selene. Kayset recognizes the ring in the x-ray and says he believes the doctor's story. Rollin says it happened during the revolution. Selene was taken out of the city by a priest for protection and came to him instead of the regular doctors. Rollin says he wanted to remove bone chips from Selene's arm, but the priest would not wait. And he warned the priest that Celine's arm would become useless without an operation, but it did not take place. Meanwhile, Willie is able to move the heavy cinder blocks to create a, a passage for he and Barney to get through, covering the tracks behind them. Jim and Cinnamon make their preparations outside the hotel, with Zygab's men waiting for them. Kayset says he's going himself to find out what's going on. He arrives at the hotel, demanding to see Celine. She appears, he asks her to identify him, which she does, as Major, Major Kesey, which was Celine's name for him when she was young. Kayset continues to rapid-fire questions at her, which she's able to answer, uh, and he sees the scar on her arm. Kayset questions Jim privately, who, and, he, and Jim admits he doesn't know for sure, but the woman believes that she is Celine. Kayset outlines a plan. Jim will bring Celine forward. Kayset will challenge him at every step, but the archbishop will take the bait and thereby be discredited. Jim agrees to the deal. Willie and Barney get to the confessional booth and take the toolkit that Cinnamon left behind, including a clamp to move more cinder blocks and dig further into the walls towards a royal vault. The archbishop demands a court of inquiry for Celine, as Case had predict predicted. As it convenes, Zageb wonders if there might be some chance that Celine might pass all the tests. 
Kaset reminds him that she won't be able to open Celine's puzzle box. And they have Dr. Rollin for insurance, too, who will confirm that, that the real Celine's arm would be useless. And Kaset has already seen that it is not. Willie and Barney get into the vault and find the puzzle box as Celine arrives to the court with Jim. There are more questions from Kaset that Celine is able to answer in significant detail, convincing many of the onlookers who she is able to recognize from their mannerisms, despite the eye drops keeping her temporarily blind. Her old doctor and the Grand Duke confirm her identity as well. Barney has some difficulty with the puzzle box, but finally gets it open, gets it open and Willie uses some clear fluid to make markings on the box. The Archbishop is about to proclaim Celine the new ruler, but Kayset demands that the puzzle box be brought out. Willie puts a small item in it. The box is put back into the vault. Willie and Barney beat a hasty exit, putting the cinder block back in place just in time and head back to their cell. Celine starts opening the box in a tense sequence with every eye on her. Kayset is shocked to see that she's actually pulling it off. Meanwhile, with all attention on Cinnamon and the box, Rollin begins to alter his coat, remove his mustache and gray hair, becoming himself and making the old doctor disappear. The box finally opens, and Celine says it contains her father's diary, and asks that the last page be read. Which fingers Kayset as a traitor who helped the revolutionaries. Kayset is left with one more card to play, and look for doc looks for Dr. Rollin, who isn't there. Kayset has to be restrained from attacking Celine, wildly declaring that Celine is dead, this woman is a fraud, and he knows it because he set the palace on fire himself and no one escaped. Guards lead Kayset and Zagab away as Barney and Willie are released. The Archbishop didn't declare Celine the queen, but she refuses, asking him to find someone young to look to the future of Povia and asks everyone in the court to accept his decision. That is her only wish. She exits into a waiting car through a throng of onlookers and the IMF head away. Mission accomplished. I mentioned uh, at the outset of this that um, <laughs> I'm a little bit emotional after watching this. I have seen this episode many, many times. Um, and every time I watch it, I am just in complete awe. This is absolute master storytelling that we're seeing here. There's not a lot of things that I've watched that I can watch again and enjoy them as much as I did the first time I saw them. This is one of those things. Um, I am going to give it a grade of S. Yes, S for superb. This episode stands as one of the absolute elite episodes of this series, and for me, possibly of television all time. Um, there's three other episodes which will be coming up, which I will consider for giving that grade. Three that I can think of right now. We'll talk about that when we come to them. First of all, let us get the most important thing out of the way. To say that this is Barbara Bain's finest hour on this show, or possibly anything that she ever did, okay, is kind of like saying that Niagara Falls is a little bit wet. Okay, I am almost I, I I'm I'm on the verge of tears, having just watched her performance in this episode. She, she, she's acting as, as though she's blind, and yet, just with her face and her voice, she is able to convey so much. And I, 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 am, I am borderline speechless. It, it, I don't have the words to say how masterful her performance was. This is her finest hour. Barbara Brain, I salute you. Um, what else is it, 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 I, what else is, 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 is great? For an episode which I know that I'm going to love, I go into it thinking, okay, let me see if I can find some small thing to say that, you know what, something I can point out. There is nothing here. There is nothing bad in this episode at all. 
I'm just going to point out some things that I like. The organ music with the with the Mission Impossible theme for Celine as she's entering and exiting. Just wow. That is so, so powerful. I don't even like it, it it's it's just so so perfect as part of the production. Um the action going back and forth, the pacing of it is just so tremendous. Going back and forth between Willie and Barney doing their thing, and then Jim and Jim and uh, Cinnamon and Rollin where, where where he is. The pacing of this episode so tremendous. There is not a dull moment. You're just kind of like, you know, just steadily just going upwards. There's no ups and downs, ups and nothing like that. Uh, just, just tremendous. As I said, master, master storytelling. The obvious things that I've mentioned over and over again. Teamwork and the power of five. Even though you could say that Rollin doesn't do, do, quote unquote, a whole heck of a lot in this episode, it, it, you know, he has possibly the most pivotal role in the whole thing, right? And this, this, that sequence where he's just changing his appearance in the middle of all of these people in a cathedral, just like, wow, just, just, just absolutely awesome. And the thing that that, that that almost really that, that really got me is the part at the end with the Archbishop and Celine. Um, I'm gonna put this video in there just so that it's there. I do not know who you are. I only know that divine providence has brought you to save my country. You know what? It doesn't matter. I don't care. Everything is good with the world and, you know, Godspeed to all of us. And, and, and he just kind of lets her go. Wonderful. Just at every level. The last thing I'll mention is General Cassette, played by Charles Aidman. I don't know much about Charles Aidman. I, he, he seems to be a very prolific actor, according to IMDb and some other places. Um, what a tremendous performance by him as well. As far as Mission Impossible villains go, this guy is amazing. Never takes his eye off the ball. You know, is as far away from the three kisses of death as you can possibly imagine. You know, lameness, schmuckery, unengaging, he is, he is the exact opposite of all of those things. He goes in to this with his eyes completely open. Yeah, he got fooled, but you know what? He got fooled by the best. And he still kept, you know, he still kept his eye on the ball and still, you know, played it out saying, you know what? I, I, I got all the aces up my sleeve. I can't lose this. And, 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 it, and, and again, can't say enough about his performance as well as a guest star. That's it for this one. Um, what an episode. Uh, I, if you have not seen it, I, I suggest you drop what you're doing and go and watch it because it, it is just absolutely incredible. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I'm really, really looking forward to getting through Season 3. Please like this episode. Please subscribe to my channel and please leave your comments. I appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.